Jim, um, you know, put me in contact with the recruiter, saw my work, and put me in contact with um, Linda Bathwater. Linda Bathwater? Yeah. And, um, and I got hired. So, and so he's just very, very dear. This, it was, you know, a crucial stepping stone for me. And, you know, it's just all about networking and getting your work out there and talking to as many people as possible and getting passed along until you land in the right place. So Jim has been was at DDB in Dallas, and then YNR in York, which we worked for a couple of years together there, and then went to Grand Buzz, and then went to Lowe, and is now at RGA, and working on exclusively on my heat. And so, like I've said before, I'm sure many times, don't stay at one place for too long. It's how you move around, make more connections, get a bigger salary, and all that good stuff. So, without further ado, Jim Ward. So, um, thanks, Maureen. Thanks yeah. very much. Um, one note before I begin is uh, I think that the transition, you know, if you look at the list of places we have been, it was traditional, traditional, traditional. And then there was sort of a, a point that I got to um, where I said that the traditional model is starting to break down. And uh, these big agencies are losing more and more business. There's got to be something different and better out there. So I actually had an opportunity to um, help sort of start up this little agency called Brand Buzz, which is, um, well, by its name, you can guess it's sort of like a guerrilla marketing, um, all, all the buzzwords fall into play, 360, out of the box thinking, all that stuff. And it was great. It was an eye-opening experience. But unfortunately, it was like 14 people, and we were promising the world. Um, so uh, you know, I think there's a balance there. That, you know. There are places that do traditional advertising, there are places that uh, do digital and guerrilla, but um, I don't think one place does it all or does it all really well. But um, I actually wanted to start with uh, a story of how I got my very first job in advertising. Um, I, uh, I went to the University of Denver. I didn't have uh, the luxury of going to an ad school. I had to figure it all out on my own. So my first, my very first job was working in the, in the basement of a department store in Denver. And I was writing like sock and bra ads. And I desperately, desperately wanted to get into an agency. So I like weaseled my way into an interview uh, through some friends at DDB Dallas. Well, I was uh, young, and I think when you're young and you're right out of school, you just want to show how wacky you are, how like, you know, nuts and creative you are. And you think that you need to do that by like doing some sort of a stunt, which is exactly what I thought. So I thought, all right, I'm going down to Dallas. They, they're going to fly me down there. I'm going to interview with these, um, all these creative directors. Um, I'm going to do something nuts. I'm going to do something crazy. So the backstory was that I was a design major. Uh, I went to school for design. I got my degree in design. And then at the very last minute, I decided I think I want to be a writer. Uh, so I thought, you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm like a platypus. I, mean, you know, I, I got web feet, I got fur, I lay eggs, you know, I have everything. So I gotta give myself a platypus. So fortunately, my sister was going to Rhode Island School of Design at the time, and she was um, in charge of the Nature Lab. Now, the Nature Lab at RISD is like this big, huge room full of stuffed animals. So I said, This is gonna be perfect. This is great. So I called her up, I said, Margaret, you gotta give me a platypus. I need a platypus, and you gotta send it to me right now. And so she says, well, let me see what I've got. I've got a squirrel, I've got a skunk, I've got lots of birds, can you do anything with a bird? Like, no, 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 it's got to be a platypus. Um, so she said, well, we don't have a platypus, um, so let me call over to Brown. I'll call Brown, and uh, they've got an nature lab. So they did some sort of exchange Brown, like, I don't know what they gave, like a wombat or something. They gave <laughs> Brown a wombat, and, and she got a platypus, and so she sent it to me. So I'm on the plane, I got a, a grocery bag with a stuffed platypus in it. I'm not really sure at this point what I'm going to do with the platypus, other than maybe like slap it on the desk and <laughs> say, fuck yeah, I'm a platypus. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I flew down there. I, um, Check into my hotel. The next day, I'm ready to go. I take a cab to the agency. I go into the building. I march right up. I'm in my weird, funky suit because I got me crazy, wacky. And I realize I've left the platypus in the taxi cab. 
So I'm somewhere right around Dallas with a stuffed platypus, which saved my life because uh, I went in to see the chief creative officer, whose name is David Fowler. Right now, David Fowler is the worldwide creative director of Ogilvy in New York. At the time, he was the chief creative officer of DDB in Dallas. And uh, if you know anything about David Fowler, he's the most buttoned up, tight assed person you'd ever want to meet. And if I had taken a platypus out of a garbage bag and put it on his desk, he would have said, get the fuck out of my office. So because I didn't have the platypus, I actually got my first job. So there's some lessons we can learn. Lesson one, you can be a platypus. That's okay to be the platypus. You can be an art director and a writer. You can be digital, you can be traditional. You should be a platypus. Don't bring the platypus. Uh, stunts don't work. Um, we've got, you know, over the years in my career, I've gotten plenty of boxes. That, like, I give my left arm to be, at, you know, shy day, and you open it up, and what's inside is the right arm, or whatever. Um, those don't work. Um, Although there is one time where it did work, and it's a famous case. There's a, a guy named Jelly Helm, who's at Wyden. And he had a box that actually, the, his uh, little box won an award, which I thought was ironic. Uh, the box said, I hear the Martin Agency is looking, is hiring writers for $25,000. And you open it up, it's a check made out to the Martin Agency for $25,000. says, when do I start? All right, so it worked once, but it doesn't work most of the time. And then the other lesson that we learned, uh, I think, which is obvious from the story, and that is that Brown has the best selection of taxidermy and semi aquatic egg laying mammals of all the Ivy League schools. Taxidermy. It was a real No, no, it was a real platypus stuff. It wasn't a, it wasn't like a wet It was, yeah. Real. Well, it's real, but it's dead. Did you owe them? Yeah. Yeah, what did I tracked it down, it yeah, because that was, someone else asked me that question. Is there like, yeah. like right now, Brown, is there a wombat with the title Platypus on it? <laughs> I tracked it down. It wasn't easy to track, I mean, hard to track down because like, it was the only bag with a Platypus. <laughs> <laughs> but we had three in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Describe yours, please. Um, so that's my first job, sir. Please don't do that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, advertising. And I think the first question is, um, have things really changed in advertising over the last 10 years? And I think the answer is yes. Um, for a few reasons, I think that traditional agencies are adding non-traditional disciplines. And a lot of this you've probably already heard. Maria has probably drilled this into your brains, or at least I hope she has. Um, traditional agencies are desperate to fill in the gaps with other stuff, like uh, direct mail and promotions and um, uh, you know, digital in particular. They want to do it all because their business is being eaten away. Because more and more money is being pushed into things like digital, and less and less is, is being spent on TV. Um, digital agencies are adding traditional capabilities. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute with RGA. We're, we're taking a lot of money away from Wyatt and Kennedy right now. They're, uh, they're desperate to get a lot of our business, and we just keep getting more and more and more of it. And we're doing things that are not just specifically um, for the web. We're doing all sorts of things. And then the internet is looking more like TV, but TV still looks like TV. TV doesn't look like the internet. So the line between your TV and your computer is starting to blur. So we're doing things on the web that look like TV spots. I mean, just, they're running on the web, but for all intents and purposes, they're TV spots. They're just a smaller screen. But has that have things really changed? Actually, we get right down to it, no. Because we still watch TV, we still read magazines, we still read the newspaper, there'll always be a need for a TV spot and a print ad, an outdoor board. Those things are never gonna go away, at least not in our lifetime. 